everybody, I'm Laura Trump coming to you from Studio 45 at Trump Tower in New York City. The Democrats want to confiscate our guns, but mass shootings are the result of mismanagement in school systems that avoid accountability for troubled students. Joining me is the co-author of Why Meadow Died, Andrew Pollack. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to see you. Hey, good morning, Laura. Good to, good to see you again. So, Andrew, you tragically lost your daughter, Meadow, in the mass murder in Parkland, Florida, on February 14th, 2018. Um, for people that didn't happen to know Meadow, um, tell us a little bit about her. What was she like? Uh, Meadow, uh, it, Meadow was my youngest child. Uh, she was the baby of the family. She was, uh, she was my only daughter, and she was graduating that year, uh, and she wanted to go to law school. She would have been enrolled in the university in Boca Raton. She knew she had me wrapped around her finger, uh, but, you know, she was like an all-American girl. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people don't know that Meadow was a fighter. Uh, she, was the she was tougher than her two brothers, you know. But uh, on that day, on the third floor, uh, Meadow got shot four times first down the hallway, and then uh, she went, she crawled, she got locked out of her room. The teacher locked her out. She was, she was stuck out in the hallway, and, and she crawled to one of the, where there was a door opening, and, and she covered a freshman there, uh, Kara, her name was. She covered the freshman at, at, at her last, uh, at the end of her life, and then the killer came down the hallway and shot my daughter another five times, and the bullets went through my daughter and killed the girl underneath her too. Oh so my God. she she was a fighter to the end. Uh, she loved life, and you know, and it was taken from all of us. Uh, she was the youngest of ten cousins, and it's not a second that goes by that I don't think about her. And it's I I describe it as an open wound that never heals when when your child uh, gets murdered because uh, you know it's just never heals and I'll never be the same uh, the type of guy that I was before. We are so sorry for such a tragic loss and such a hole in your heart and in your family, um, I'm sure. But you actually have taken what happened to your daughter and, and you're trying to, to help. And you actually recently released a book called Why Meadow Died. Tell me about it. Why did you write this book and what, what are the goals of, of the book? Well, I wrote the book. It started out as just it was just, I wanted to know the facts of what happened. Like, uh, you know, who was responsible? How could I put my daughter in a school and, and she gets murdered and I never see her again? You know, the first week before my daughter was even buried, uh, the superintendent w was on TV blaming the NRA in front of the school and, and, and blaming gun control. We need more gun control. And it was the same as that sheriff, the failed sheriff in Broward. He was on TV blaming the NRA. He was on that town hall blaming the NRA and guns. But, you know, I, I'm a facts guy. You know, I wanted to know exactly what happened to my daughter. And, and as I started looking into facts, uh, it, was, it was so obvious that there were so many failures that happened that it, happened to, it had to be a book because it was so much. Because then I started looking into these policies that they put in place. Uh, that started with the Obama administration, where of, of not holding kids accountable uh, from in school. Really, that's what had happened, and it's uh, it, it took off throughout the whole country. Uh, like for instance, my daughter, when when she was in school, kids were allowed, if you could believe it, four misdemeanors per school year without ever getting introduced to law enforcement. So a child would be able to assault the teacher, sell drugs, steal an iPhone have a fist fight in the classroom, okay? And that would be in ninth grade. And then 10th grade, it, it resets. Every year it would reset. So when I was looking into those policies, I found out that this kid was so evil and dangerous that they had to frisk him every morning before school. Oh my God. He wasn't allowed in, yeah, he wasn't allowed in school with a backpack. He threatened other kids' lives. He threatened to shoot the school up. He trespassed at the school after he threatened to shoot the school up and still never was arrested. So while I was uncovering all this, Democrats were still blaming the NRA and gun control. 
Yeah. I mean, you were you were definitely thrust out there into the spotlight after your daughter's murder. But you actually have, uh, you know, I mean, you're talking about some of the things you did. Tell me a little bit about how else you have used your platform now that you have to hold public officials accountable and demand changes to protect school children. Because I, I think we can all agree nothing is, is more important than making sure that we protect our kids in school every single day. Well, one thing I did, uh, what I accomplished is probably what meant the most to me was when I met with the president uh, uh, after in the listening before the listening session, I came uh, to the Oval Office and, and, and uh, you know, the White House had called me and I said, you know what, I, I just I'm in the process of mourning. Uh, I don't I'm not going to come to the White House for a tour. I don't need a tour. I said, but if the president wants to sit with me, then I'll sit with him and have a conversation. So. And the next day I get a call that, that the president wanted to meet with me. And I said, okay. And, and I flew up with my sons and my wife and uh, we met with the president in the Oval Office. And I said, and I, and he listened to me, you know, people, you know, when I think of you, uh, I call him like your father, because to me, he's personal, you know, it's yeah. not like just the president. He's a, he's a real guy and he, he really means well. And, and I really, I get along with him and I really like him and I know he's sincere uh, when we met. So he, so I said, you know, Mr. President, I said, I think you should put together a commission uh, to look into all these, the shootings that are going on so we could make these kids safer. So he looks, and then I'll never forget it. He looks up to Hope Hicks, because Hope Hicks was there then. And he goes, Hope, I like that idea. I want to do it. The next thing I know, the president is putting together a federal school safety commission with all the secretaries of, in his cabinet. And they did a bunch of research for over 10 months uh, with into policies, what would make kids safer. And they came up with over 100 recommendations, uh, th your, this administration. No other administration has ever done this type of research before. And what meant most to me was the president, he ended those Obama-era leniency policies. Yeah. He rescinded them, which meant so much to me. Now, since last year, you actually have gotten to know President Trump, as you mentioned. I want everybody to take a look at this. Tonight, we are especially grateful to be joined by the Pollock family, who lost their beloved daughter, Meadow, in a horrific Parkland shooting earlier this year. I've gotten to know him, and he's a great, great gentleman. Andrew, tell me, you know, people often get Donald Trump wrong, and um, you've gotten to know the president uh, a little bit. Tell me about him. What do you wish more people knew about him? He's a real person, and, and that's why Democrats can't take him. You know what I mean? He <laughs> says what's on his mind. He puts our country first, and, and and he loves this country, or he wouldn't do it. You know, with, you know that's the way I look at him. And, and I met him a bunch of times. He's personal. Just last weekend, he tweeted me out about my daughter. You know, out of the blue, your father's just thinking about me. And he, he said, he mentioned me and Meadow in a tweet. And you know, he's just a real person. And, and if you can't take, you know, and he's going to say what's on his mind and he fights for us day in and day out every single day. Yeah. Well, uh, I know that uh, you know the president's heart. Like you said, you've met with him. You've seen him for who he is. He is a real guy and they don't know how he's to deal greatest. with that. I love him. He is the no, greatest. I love the guy. And uh, listen, we, we appreciate all the great support for the president, Andrew. Um, we appreciate you being on here. And uh, thank you for fighting every day. I know that Meadow would be really, really proud of you. Oh, thank you. And I'll never quit. I'm always there for him and, you, and your family. And you know what? If it wasn't for fighters like us, you know, uh, we lose the country. So that's why I respect your dad so much, because he doesn't have to be doing it. And he's out there fighting these bad, evil people every single day. You know, I don't even yeah. know how he runs the country after what, what he's got coming at him every single day. You know he's, what I mean? Every he's day he's got stuff with this impeachment, with this, with the Ukrainians, with the Russians. Yeah. You know, and now he's got to run the whole country to boot. And I, all, and I respect him so much. And there's so many people out there that love him. And he's just got to keep fighting for all of us because that's what he does every single yeah. day. He fights for all of us patriotic Americans. Well, you know he will, and we'll keep fighting, too. Um, Andrew, it was a pleasure to have you. Thank you for being with us today. Thanks, Laura. In honor of victims like Meadow, President Trump is fully committed to ensuring that all students in America can learn in a safe and secure environment 
no matter what it takes. That's the real news for today. If you'd like to get involved with Team Trump, go to DonaldJTrump.com or text TRUMP to 88022 to become part of our winning team in 2020. I'm Laura Trump from Studio 45 at Trump Tower in New York City. Thanks for joining us, everybody.